How do you prevent potato blight? All disease comes from weak, unhealthy plants. When you have healthy plants, you do not get any, any health issues. And um, because my plants are healthy, I just don't have any blight. It's just, it can't happen here because the plants are well. One time you told me, maybe it was like a fungus or a mold or something like that, that somebody was trying to combat and you told them to not water the leaves? Yeah, it was pro probably, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of mold powder mill comes from dampness and lack of air and light exposure. So if things are getting plenty of air and light and not a lot of dampness, mold can't happen there. It's just we can't grow in that, in that environment. Why do you plant in rows? Wouldn't it take less room to kind of cluster it up or to plant in like squares or in sections? It's true. I was raised in a Swiss German culture. And that culture mentality is everything has a place and should be in place. And I had people come here. My wife had a student who was out here one day, and she's the kind who plants everything all together, just big masses, you know. And she made a comment that I thought was quite interesting. She says, you know, I really love your garden. I can see from the house what I want. I can go right to it and get it, and I don't get wet or dirty. This is very convenient. And that's why I do it. It's quite convenient. And it just fits me. Everybody's different, and you can do it however you want. It doesn't matter. But this just fits who I am. So what if I planted my seeds in the fall or the winter as opposed to the spring? Would they still grow once spring came? Yeah, I did that one year. I tried to push the seasons and I planted all my April stuff in March and they stayed in the ground till April. They didn't come up. But what amazed me, I planted all my May stuff in April and the bean seeds didn't rot. They stayed in the ground all for a whole month and didn't rot, which is amazing in the compost. So, you can plant, but just, and nature's very on time. It's not going to be moved by you, and so it's just I just learned to work with nature because it's, I'm not going to change it. And so it doesn't do me any good to plant a month early because it's not going to come up. You know? <laughs> so why bother? <laughs> I heard that like uh, if there's a tomato plant out in the wild or whatever, and it drops the fruit, and over the winter and fall and early spring, it all just kind of disintegrates or gets you know washed away or whatever and there's a little coating on the seeds and eventually that goes away and then in spring that's when the tomatoes will pop up yeah uh, I find my potato beds where I plant all the time I have to go in the summertime and I'm pulling up like weeds of tomatoes because they fell on the ground and the seeds lay there and they grew you know the challenge where I have here because it's a cool climate I have to start early if I'm going to get tomatoes because it's not not warm here so if I don't start stuff early inside and set out plants I'm not going to get tomatoes but if you live in a hot climate and you can just leave them lay on the ground let them grow they'll be great they'll be perennial they won't. it's very easy to do one of my subscribers and well uh, one of I'm a subscriber of hers <laughs> uh she did the back to eden garden not this year but last year and then life happened and she just never got out to her garden and one day she looked out there and everything was just growing from the year before it just she had tomatoes and she had all of her beans and everything and again i i always appeal to nature no one in nature is planting anything nature is designed to be totally self-sustaining continually everything produces seed they fall on the ground and they grow with no attention. You know, it's quite simple. You know, and if we just kind of line up and do what it does, we can really reduce a lot of work for ourselves. <laughs> I know that from time to time you'll grow weeds intentionally so you have something to feed the chickens. I saw that a couple times ago when I was out here. In fact, I ate some of your weeds and it was really good. Um, what if you don't want weeds? How long does it take to get your garden under control from like just overabundance of weeds? Well, weeds happen because weeds are in the air, and if they, they land on fertile soil and if it's wet, they're going to sprout. So it's impossible to not have weeds. But during the summer, because I don't water my garden, I have no weeds, because when they, they blow in on this dry ground, they can't germinate. And so it's quite convenient. But as far as having a weed-free garden totally, it's impossible because the wind blows and they're in the air, and if you've got fertile soil and it's wet, they're going to sprout. It happens. But they pull easy, and it's you know, not, not a challenge. Okay, um, is there a, a way you would recommend to someone to combat weeds, like, uh, that's not 
chemicals. That's not um, like a pestis or not a um, like Roundup. Yeah, just to cover. I had I had people call me. It was amazing. It says, yeah, we you know we've gardened all of our lives and we spent hours weeding. This year we had to actually count the amount of weeds we had in the garden. We were so blown away. We had to, we had to go out there and you know because we didn't see any. There was just so few. And so the covering definitely eliminates a huge amount of weeds. And the other side of it is, if they do show up, they pull easy. So it just makes it very convenient. I've heard of um, something like maybe vinegar and water or something like that. I don't know, maybe. Okay. I, I, I just, I've never tried to kill them because they pull easy. And to me, they're a natural resource for my chickens, so they're not negative. They're a benefit, so I just have never had any reason to kill them. They're just, you know, I can always use them in whatever state they're in as feed for my chickens. Okay.